All right, just a very quick video showing you guys uh, something that happens rarely, but sometimes it happens while you're building these boards, right? This, I'm populating these boards. This is a, a new version that is coming. Uh, there's nothing different. It's just the fact that they are already populated. So you don't have to solder them. You basically just take them off of the little baggie where they come and you slap yourselves on there and then you start uh, putting together uh, assemblies, which then you can put in your enclosures and then you make a, a battery, right? But every once in a while, you get a thing where you just finish doing, you know, one sort of like this. And then I like to always test, right? Once I have like a bunch of them ready like this, then I just test them. And every once in a while, you get this. You get, you know, some weird measurements. You're like, what? No, cell number one is 3.1 and cell number two is 4.9? Well, that's kind of impossible. Not that impossible, but it's it's unlikely because these cells, they all coming off of uh, the charger, right? And they charge up to 4.2 and then they stay there for a little while. Uh, and so this, this, yeah, you know, first of all, why is the number one really low and number two really high? there's something weird there. So once you turn it around, what you realize is that, look at that. Yeah, for some reason, that thing burned up. I don't know if it was really, maybe in the manufacturing process, it's it was a weak trace there, or it was damaged. And I think maybe what could have happened was the fact that just powering this little unit just so that it could read the voltage. Maybe that was enough to uh, to break it there, right? To burn that up. And so as a result, we are, uh, we don't have a trace there. And that's the reason why it's giving us weird readings. Now, why is it not saying zero? Uh, I bet it's because there's still some electricity that is being transferred in there in right there where you see that it's uh, that little line or something um just enough to throw this very very sensitive uh you know meter off right and that's why it reads voltage on number one and number two remember it's uh the little trace number two is what is broken so that means you have negative on the number one and then the positive is the one that is weak but then you have the the next positive so that means it's the center tap on these two cells that are that is broken and so there there's some phantom voltage there and this little thing is picking it up but that's why i i like to test them right so how do you fix that well you just you know uh not use this board right uh, that's the easiest way. Uh, hopefully you got several, you know, you got extra of these boards. If you if your project needs 10, well, maybe you got 11 or something like that. If you didn't, then you could actually fix this. And it's kind of a tedious job, but you could do it. And I'm going to show you right now how to do it, right? So it requires a... Um... Oh, Jesus. Okay, so now it's saying it doesn't like it because of the voltage. So when you read here, uh, where is it at? Let's see the thing. Replace fuse with 36 gauge, right? Or 0 0.0127 millimeter square, right? So that's, uh, you can search. If you want to be super precise, then you check that and you get a 36 gauge wire and then you do it. Now, I'm a bit of a hack with everything that I do obviously and uh i like to you know do diy stuff this is entire project is diy but on this one i just like to take like just a regular cable this is like a i don't know what is this like a 20 gauge uh wire and i like to take one strand in there and then use that in there and then test it out uh and see if it works uh it has i haven't done many of these but i yeah, I'm going to say that it's 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 going to be okay. This is going to be about equivalent there. Uh, when I tested these, these would break around 10 amps, which is kind of amazing for being such a small little 
trays, right? So let's do that. I'm gonna prepare this thing. I'm gonna put the camera down and then take the batteries out, disconnect all the stuff, and then put the little wire there. And then I'm gonna show you uh, me soldering it. And then we'll put this back together. And then we'll use this, uh, this, this board here, just like if it was a regular one, right? Okay. All right, here we go. I took the batteries out, uh, placed the little tiny little strand of wire in there, and then I solder it. I put my soldering iron down from what I usually use because I'm usually soldering beefy stuff, you know. So I put it down to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then that allows you to do like, you know, stuff like this without really burning it and moving it around. So there we go. Look at that. That should uh, now operate as normal. So let's load it up with batteries and then uh, and then test it. So of course, uh, you gotta make sure that you follow the, uh, the, 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 the um, polarity marks here, right? Uh, on the edge of the uh, board here and I what I like to do is start looking at it on the first one actually I like testing it uh, putting this guy on here and then kind of testing it as I go because then I don't know if there is a problem right away so here's the weird thing usually that's doing something already but it's not so then I kind of worry there Okay, so here we go. Now there's two of them and this hasn't come up. Let me just check it here. All right, so here we go. It was just, I don't know, it was a loose connection here that I haven't figured out a good way, a better, more secure way to connecting these in there. So for right now, yeah, you kind of have to make do with uh, those little connections there and that they're always kind of loose and stuff and it doesn't work. So here we go. 413, 4.14, there we go. That's looking more normal let's put a third one in here there's the third one let's do a fourth one in there then fifth one sixth one and then finally the seventh cell and look at that there we go seventh cell 29.9 just over 29 volts that's where you want to see each one of these boards. Uh, and I'd say this is good. Now you can put this on an assembly sort of like this. And then uh, put it in a box. Either this kind or, you know, these ones over here that are whatever box you're going to end up putting your battery. In this case, I'm working on one that is going to be 48 volts. Uh, and I had to stop my review. I'm reviewing that battery over there because this, they need these ones uh, because they're gonna use it on a project and stuff. So it's gonna be an uh, ammo box that is gonna be 48 volts. So it's gonna have, a, uh, you know, the whole two uh, BMSs in here and put and connect it in series. So there's 24 volts, 24 volts, and then I'll make a little cable that will be in series. And we're gonna series this battery come out with 48 volts so stay tuned for that project uh, i'll have a whole video showing you how to put this one together uh and it's going to be sold as a kit so that you basically just get your cells ah even the cells i might uh, be able to put them in there and include them or include a version of that kit where you just basically get all the parts you put it together and there's not going to be any soldering finally you'll be able to put batteries recycle batteries on a recycled uh, ammo box and get either 24 volts or 48, right? So, all right. Thank you for watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.